Hello everyone, welcome back to Garden Fever. Today I got a, an exciting episode for you today. Today I'm going to discuss with you one of my favorite pest controls. Um, I have to do this inside because it's raining right now. We're reaching the end of our season. It's actually uh, 40 degrees outside in the 40s. It's very cold, um, which would affect this particular thing that I'm about to show you. So we have to do this inside, but just keep in mind that uh, from about July till October here in Zone 6, Northern Utah, is the period to use this pest control. And uh, this pest control is very environmentally friendly, not 100% obviously. I'd like to dwell on that a little bit. Um, when it comes to pest control, there's some debate out there what works and what doesn't work. I think some method works better than others. I don't really think there's a right or wrong. I think it's just humans trying to in, to battle pests in their garden in the most environmentally sound way that they can. Most people. Some people don't care about the environment, but a lot of people do. So uh, Anyway, to get more straight into it, um, this pest control has pros and cons, but it is, in, in my opinion, one of the more natural and best pest controls that you can put in your garden. So with that, I'm going to show you what it is. Um, I'm sure a lot of ladies out there are going to freak out over this. So we'll get into kind of how to take care of this pest control, uh, how to implement it, how to, uh, where its negatives are, and how to combat that. We'll get into that later. Let me introduce you to my friend here, is this. It's called a praying mantis. And for those of you who don't know what a praying mantis is, it's an insect that is carnivorous. They don't eat plants. Um, some people are creeped out by them. I think this is one of the greatest bugs there are, especially for a gardener. Um, this thing is tough um, and fragile at the same time. It's intelligent for a bug. And they're incredibly easy to handle. A lot of people are creeped out by them, but if you'll notice, he's calm with me. He's not trying to hurt me. He's not trying to get away. I've established a rapport with this guy, and he knows that I'm not here to hurt him. If you were to just grab him, grab the armored neck piece to try and catch him, he would try and pinch you and bite you. Oh, he just flew away. That's a good time to show, okay? If you put him in front like a bird, he'll climb right on you. So, I'm showing you guys this because this will... One of their favorite foods is grasshoppers, crickets, flies, mosquitoes. Um, when they're young, they're very small, and they even eat aphids and smaller, smaller insects. Uh, when they get to be older, around the fall time, like around this side, they take out grasshoppers, spiders, uh, flies, uh, moths, various types of things. But one thing I wanted to show you, and wanted to tell you this, because they love grasshoppers. So, what you want to do is try and get this to these guys to just live in your garden. It's impossible to 100% contain them, but notice how I just put my hand in front of him and he is okay with that. I'm going to let this guy go today, but I didn't want to do this video in the rain, so we're doing it in the inside. But I let him go in my garden and I let females go. This guy, I think this guy's a male. Um, he uh, is probably looking for a mate. But I'll show you an egg sack on a picture leave those alone. If you don't want to handle it like this guy is, that's all you got to do. Perfectly harmless bug. And yet will keep your garden free from pests. Now like I said, there are negatives to these. There, nothing is 100%. I'd like to, I'll have words with anyone that thinks that they found a pest control that is 100%. The, the negatives to these guys is they're they're not necessarily biased on what they catch. So my point is, is they can get bees, which is a negative. They can also get small birds, like hummingbirds, which can be a negative. Um, they also only get big enough to help with like grasshoppers and things like that later in the season. So it's like the grasshoppers come out, start eating your plants, and then the praying mantises come out. So, anyway, I'm going to break away for now and uh, show you more examples of this and picture-wise and, and whatever I don't 
uh, convey in this video. I'll put in the annotations. I'm trying to keep my videos shorter. I know everybody likes shorter videos, so I don't want to ramble on too much, and I tend to do that. So, anyway, I'll let you go for now. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment. I encourage everybody, if you see a praying mantis, handle it the way I have shown you, and then just set it in your garden and keep doing that. And if you do that over the years, eventually they'll. It, it creates like a praying mantis city where they'll return in your yard and leave the egg sacs alone. Oh, also a warning, if you see the egg sacs, um, protect them a little bit because magpies, ravens, crows, and a few other birds will eat them. Um, those are an egg sack you want to, to save because in the spring, when they're really small, they eat aphids and other small little insects. And then as they get bigger, they hit the grasshoppers and, and crickets and things like that. So, like I said, not a 100% foolproof pest control system however it's a very good one why because it's free two it doesn't damage the environment unless you get like an infestation and they start taking out every insect in existence but it's very doubtful but anyway 